a strong government yeah. is a weak country. Right. A coalition government means a strong country. A full majority government, if you still speak about mutton mass machi, if you try to divide people on communal lines and not really speak about what you've been able to achieve, why are you betraying Maharashtra and why are you trying to break Maharashtra? That is my main objection with the BJP. Yeah. Why are you so anti-Maharashtra? What has the BJP done in the past 10 years to benefit Maharashtra that Maharashtra should vote for them again? Of course, Mumbaikars do trust us and that's been seen, which is why the BJP is not ready to hold polls. Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Purva Chitnis. While the election campaigning is in full swing, if we talk about Maharashtra, Maharashtra politics is not complete without discussing the Thakres and Shiv Sena. So to talk about that, I am today joined uh, by the younger Thakre, that is Aditya Thakre, and who's campaigning across and he's taking time out. Thank you, Aditya, for uh, taking time out and speaking to us. Uh, you have been campaigning even right now. You've come from your campaign. How is it looking like? It's looking good. Um, it's very evident that this election, there will be a change in the government of India. You will see newer faces. You will see a more balanced opinion. You will see... Uh, every voice being heard and of course you will see the India Alliance uh, doing well across the country. So that is I think at least the feel as of today because we've had 10 years of lies, we've had 10 years of jumlas. I think that's enough for us. But like uh, how is it different from last time because in 2019 when you uh, were campaigning for Lok Sabha election at that point of time you were an ally with BJP and there was Narendra Modi uh, factor as well. So how is it different this time? I think this time um, people have realized that even after 10 years of a full majority government, if you still speak about mutton mass machi, if you try to divide people on communal lines and not really speak about what you've been able to achieve, um, who has the government really worked for? It's worked for probably just one industrialist. Um, it's worked for the stakeholders of the BJP. But has it really worked for the people of India? And that's very evident, you know, five years ago, all of us as a country were willing to give another five years uh, to the Honorable Prime Minister and to, of course, the party, to the BJP. But again, right after that, we've seen jumla after jumla, jumla after jumla. Mm. Um, you know, the people forgave demonetization. They had forgiven GST. But now you see people being badly hit by all of this. Um, most of us in our age group today, if you look at the young people, we're looking for jobs. People are looking for jobs, yet they're not available in the urban areas or the rural areas. The agrarian distress is at its peak. Hmm. Uh, the government is not really willing to do anything for the farmers apart from just putting up advertisements and hoardings. Hmm. So, um, I think these are issues that are really burning on ground. Look at gas, diesel, petrol. All the promises that were made in 2014. Today, after 2019, after 10 years, hmm. If the big leaders of BJP come and ask and blame Nehru for what's happening for today, mm. how has this been a government for the people? So uh, you're trying to say is that you are taking the campaign on local issues rather than national where Modi versus who? Absolutely. I mean, finally, uh, yes, the BJP doesn't really have another face or another choice or another alternative for the Prime Minister's face. Mm -hmm. But are you really telling me that a country of a billion plus people, everyone else is worthless? Is the BJP telling us this? We have multiple choices in our country. Mm. Uh, the fact is, and we've come to believe this strongly, that a relatively weaker government or a coalition government mm -hmm. is a stronger country. Because a strong country is actually a weak government. A weak, uh, if you see, the whole equation goes like a strong government yeah. is a weak country. Right. A coalition government means a strong country. Yeah. Because today, India and the amount of diversity it holds across the country, right? Uh, across every state, across every region, you need to have every voice heard. Mm -hmm. You're not hearing those voices. Mm -hmm. You're hearing the voice of one man, monkey bath of one man, and probably an industrialist who's backing the BJP. That's it. Yeah. But this time around, like this is like your first big test uh, electorally after the split in the Shiv Sena. And the uh, last time people who have been you know, elected, like those MPs, most of them are not with you. Uh, you're going with fresher faces, uh, newer people are getting opportunities. How are you convincing voters and uh, what is there that uh, you know, you're taking to the voters and how can they trust these newer faces then? I think one of the most important things is that a lot of these people who ran away to Gujarat and Guwahati, Goa, all of this and then turned to be traitors, uh, some of them actually have not even got their tickets repeated. Hmm. You know, there are MPs who've got, you know, we got them elected five times with right. the support of the people, love of the people uh, and the faith of the people in one name, which is Uddha Barasaheb Thakre. Mm -hmm. Today, without him standing behind these traitors, they're not even getting tickets from a man who had promised them that he would leave his political career aside forever 
if they don't win hmm. so that is the state and you know in the introduction you said politics is not complete in maharashtra without a thakre you know very humbly i do not know how true that could be but then the fact is the mahayuti realized that without a thakre they cannot do anything so they've taken they've tried to taking uh, take a thakre also another thakre yeah so they've <laughs> tried to take our name they uh, they've tried to take our party they've take, uh, taken our symbol now they try to take our surname and still they cannot win so uh, do you, do you really think there is some impact of mns like since you brought uh, raj thakre uh, as well so do you think there will be any impact of him because we see whenever he gives a lot of rallies there are a lot of people who come to hear him listen to his speeches uh, but even electorally if we speak mns has not done that well but still he is not someone who can be discarded completely so will i think it is pass, for especially in mumbai no it is for the voters uh, who will vote or I mean, there are not many voters who will choose BJP out of their own will today. Mm. But uh, for those, especially in uh, you know UP and Bihar, who will vote for BJP, they need to think that the BJP is allied here with a party that's beaten up people from UP and Bihar multiple times. Mm -hmm. Two, um, the Jains also will think the Jain community will think about voting for BJP when they realize that the BJP is allied with a party that has actually. hung up and protested with chicken and mutton and meat mm -hmm. outside jain there are which is the holiest place for them so the voters must think while voting for the bjp about who they have allied for and it is for the mns leaders and cadre now to actually figure out how they will uh, speak and support the bjp's anti maharashtra motives about taking all the industry away from maharashtra to gujarat mm -hmm. how is the mns cadre going to go and justify this uh, to their own cadre mm -hmm. Uh, let me take back take you back to the split uh, part and most of them uh, who ever left at that point of time they also said that they partially left because of aditya thakre how do you respond to that i mean um, finally that they've given a lot of reasons and you know i said jokingly also the other day that they'll finally come down to a point where they say because aditya thakre wears blue shirts we will have the party mm -hmm. but uh, they first said hindutva then they said mr ajit pawar wasn't giving them enough funds then they said yeah. mr nawab malik who is a national traitor sat next to uh, us and we didn't want that then they said uh, ikbal birchi's partner was you know part of this government so we want that everything that they've spoken against they've now taken in their own government so so the reasons can be multiple times but i can assure you one thing i don't know if they left because of me but they won't see the steps of the parliament and vidhan bhavan because of me i can assure you that because only and only because they have betrayed maharashtra and the cause of maharashtra they've sent all our industries to gujarat they've sent the opportunities that the young people could have got in maharashtra from across the nation people come here with dreams of getting a job they've sent these jobs away to another state but are you sensing that on ground because they are going to go out and talk to voters that vote for us because of prime minister modi okay? absolutely but what has the bjp done in the past 10 years to benefit maharashtra that maharashtra should vote for them again hmm. um if you look at the two two and a half years of the mva where was the bjp or the union government when we were dealing with the covid crisis here we had two cyclones coming in the talk talk day yeah. uh the honorable prime minister visited gujarat gave them 1500 crores as uh, damage repair fund what did maharashtra get not a single penny we were not even getting a gst that was due for maharashtra hmm. and in the past two and a half years maharashtra has got every industry being pushed away from maharashtra to gujarat i'm not against gujarat they have to get what they deserve and what is rightfully theirs and they do really well with vibrant gujarat likewise with delhi or tamil nadu or assam whatever they deserve and whatever is due for them they must get but don't snatch it away from us to give it to your favorite state are we not a part of this country right. why are we treated as a different part of this country or second class citizens in maharashtra mm -hmm. and in the past two and a half years they snatched our government they snatched our party taken away our symbol they broke the ncp they broke up broke the pawar family they formed their illegal government which is anti democratic unconstitutional mm -hmm. having done all of it what have they achieved for maharashtra what did they get for maharashtra mm -hmm. zero zilch nothing so uh, is it because of some kind of uh, you know because they have taken your party their symbol is it because of that that you are like completely against bjp because some people might say if at all bjp want to give those things to you you might just want to reconcile no, with no who them. are they to give it back to us they not to some overlords of this country but the point is this that we as a family we as three generations mm -hmm. we as a party stuck by them for 25 years mm -hmm. without asking any questions mm -hmm. in all the protests 
in all uh, the bad times, in the lowest of the BJP times and even individually for their leaders. And when they came to power, they realized that they don't need friends. In 2014, when they broke the alliance with us, were we not Hindu back then? Hmm. Or were we not Hindu enough for them? In 2019, when they betrayed us on the promise that they've given us. Okay, chalo, forgiven on that. Why are you betraying Maharashtra today? Maybe he could have sent us uh, in, you know, uh, somewhere saying, okay, now you are no longer needed. We don't need friends. We don't believe in coexistence. Your work is done. Chalo, tata, bye bye. Fine, I understand that. Why are you betraying Maharashtra? And why are you trying to break Maharashtra? Mm -hmm. That is my main objection with the BJP. Mm -hmm. Why are you so anti Maharashtra? You spoke about 2019. So, uh, sorry, and, and the same yeah. will apply to Delhi. The same will apply to Bihar. The BJP successively, before they formed, before AAP formed the Delhi government, had promised statehood to Delhi. Hmm. Hmm. Full statehood. Why haven't they given that to them? Uh, why have they arrested a sitting uh, chief minister from Delhi? Hmm. Why uh, has Ladakh not got the promise of a full statehood fulfilled after five years of a brilliant speech by some uh, MP? I mean, that one MP from Ladakh, yeah. you know, he had given a brilliant speech. All of us actually uh, congratulated him on that. Yeah. Where is that voice today? Um, look at Bihar. Successively, that the Prime Minister has campaigned in Bihar with Mr. Nitish Kumar whenever he was on the BJP side mm -hmm. on multiple occasions mm -hmm. and not on this side. Uh, they've promised packages for Bihar. Yeah. Has a single rupee gone to Bihar? No, nothing. Right. So, uh, 2019, you said. Uh, 20, now, recently, Uddhav Thakre said that in 2019, there were talks where, you know, Mr. Fadnavis said that he would gro groom you uh, to become the CM and he himself would go to uh, Delhi. Were you privy to that information? I think whatever is said is out there in the open and whatever has happened was out there in the open. What really hurt us after that was Mr. Fadnavis called the holiest place for us, which is my grandfather's room and holiest place for all Shiv Sainiks. Vandana uh, Hinduism Samrat Barasab Thakre's bedroom or his room as some Kholi. Mm. That has hurt us the most. How can you call a room which has, you know, supported your party so much, the mm. man whose, you know, presence that supported your party so much, just another room? Mm. How can you break a promise that has been given there? Mm. And again, how can you break promises so often? I is it one of your jumlas? Then we've seen multiple of those. But uh, did you want to become uh, chief minister back? I have been serving the state. There is no such dream. My dream is to get Maharashtra to number one again in industries and in agriculture. Look at what is happening today. Uh, in the two and a half years of the MVA government, in terms of environment, yes, we were leading the country mm -hmm. amongst all other states. In terms of industries, during the COVID lockdown, this very location, we've had magnetic Maharashtra conferences over virtual conferences. Almost six and a half lakh crores of investment pulled into Maharashtra when the world was shutting down. Mm. Uh, COVID management was one of you know those which is appreciated around the world. Uh, in terms of agriculture, when there was a crisis, be it unseasonal rainfall or hailstorms, we've supported the farmers. Just standing by the people in Maharashtra was very important. In that circumstance, if you look at us, we were serving the people without you know, having any dreams without harboring any dreams of who will become CM or who's CM, DCM, anything of that. We want to serve our people. In the past two and a half years, Maharashtra situation has deteriorated. Hmm. Not a single ma magnetic Maharashtra conference has happened. Hmm. The two Davos trips have been of just e expenditure. Yeah. Spending money left, right, center on fun trips, nothing coming out of it. Hmm. Vibrant Gujarat has happened twice. Yeah. Why not magnetic Maharashtra? Because Magnetic Maharashtra was told not to happen on the days of Vibrant Gujarat. At the same time, Mr. Stalin from uh, Tamil Nadu has pulled in 6 lakh crores for Tamil Nadu. Then why couldn't our chief minister do it here? Because the current government, the current regime works for the Gujarat government. That's, that's about it. In future, would you like to become chief minister? I am serving the people and I love to serve the people. Uh, let me be very honest, none of us come into politics with the dream of I want to be chief minister, I want to be prime minister, it's not about us. Yeah. For us, it's not our man ki baat, it's dil ki baat. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Maybe in future we'll see what happens. Uh, you have uh, started you know, your career, political career from Mumbai and it has always been Mumbai. You've been talking about uh, Mumbai all the time. Uh, but you know, and for Shiv Sena also, like Mumbai has been an integral part. But uh, we don't see a manifesto uh, coming out from Shiv Sena, like as very a part soon. of... Uh, very soon, it's in, in the making. So there is, of course, um, if you see 
the India manifesto will come out also and then the Shiv Sena manifesto will come out for every region, state and of course movement. Yeah, because for regional parties like yes. and especially in, uh, you know, in this election, in the India alliance, we've seen that regional parties have a, a longer say and uh, yes. they, uh, the regional parties are kind of dominating the Congress. Even in Maharashtra, we are seeing that. I think it's coexistence. I mean, there's no dominating. It's coexistence. It's uh, See, I'll tell you very honestly, the India Alliance, if you look at different political parties on a political spectrum come from different ideologies mm. and different backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, we've had multiple different voices in the past, just like the NDA was with Vajpayee Saab. And yeah. that was what a democracy should be. Right. You've got every region, every state, every ideology being represented at the helm, at the cabinet table. So whenever there's a decision, it's not a blanket decision. It's not a decision which is made by one man for one industrialist. It has to be for everybody. Today, uh, the India Alliance is about first and foremost saving democracy mm -hmm. from the death of democracy that we are seeing in India today. Along with that, another very, very crucial factor and goes hand in hand is saving a constitution from being changed. Mm -hmm. The BJP wants to rewrite the constitution. Yeah. All the rights and duties that you have today as a citizen of India, they want to change it to make you a part of the BJP and not to stop and make you vote for BJP, but enter your homes and tell you what to eat, what to wear. Right. And that is very evident. I mean, look at the speeches of the BJP today. They're speaking about what the opposition is eating. Hmm. And, you know, all of these mechanisms, be it Pegasus, be it the surveillance on political leaders of the opposition today. Hmm. Mark my words, God forbid, if the BJP wins tomorrow, which it won't because India will vote decisively, they will enter every person's house, every common citizen's house and start surveillance on you. You live in a big boss house. Hmm. How important are then regional parties? Because BJP... Very important. I mean, if you see again, uh, the coalition years, yeah. regional parties were very important because hmm. they are voices that represent particular regions. And hmm. every state has a different ideology, different culture, different voice. Yeah. Every voice of that must be represented. Yeah. And uh, speaking about Mumbai then, Mumbai is in the fifth phase, but uh, since you have taken like, you know, matters in your hand as far as Mumbai lead, leading in Mumbai is concerned, you have spoken about the Mahalakshmi race course issue, the uh, delay in opening of uh, Dilal Bridge or the Gokhale Bridge issue. Uh, you, you know, uh, especially if you talk about the big ticket infrastructure as well. Now, CM and the Mahayuti leaders have been going on saying that the MTHL was done by them. Mm -hmm. The coastal road, the partial opening of coastal road was done by them. Yeah. So how do you respond to that? I think it's become a joke. Um, Mumbai and a lot more cities across Maharashtra have not faced elections for the past two and a half years. Um, if you want to, you know, voice your uh, troubles about garbage not being picked up or roads being dug up, who do you go to? Hmm. Uh, the earlier municipal yeah. commissioner was not available to many ministers also. He was only at the uh, you know, beck and call of the chief minister, who is illegal any which ways. And of course, his favorite contractors. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the Gokhale Road Bridge, the local BJP MLA has gone to Gokhale Bridge and uh, clicked picture saying, Abhi kaam chal hai, kaam jaldi inaugurate hoga. How did you not see the two uh, arms matching each other in a difference of six feet? That's ridiculous, beyond yeah. a point. The coastal road, um, so had we been in government, the first girder was launched in Jan 2020 by Mr. Uddhav Thakre's chief minister for the MTHL, which they've rebranded as Atal Setu for their own branding, which is fine. Okay. Uh, I tell them, take all the credit in the world you want to, but at least do the work on time. Mm -hmm. The MTHL would have completed in our time by October 2023. Mm -hmm. The Worldly Shudi connector would have been completed by November 2023 and the coastal road would have been completed both sides, all arms, by December 2023. Mm -hmm. The, the Nariman Point Cuff Parade Connector would have been completed by mid-2024. Mm -hmm. uh, the metros would have been completed by mid-2024. The Isar Mira Road Connector would have been completed by 2025. The reason was, every week we had meetings of reviews with all departments on board, all public elected op officials on board, and every month we had a visit there. Today, what has happened is, just for escalations, they've changed designs. Uh, just for kickbacks, they wanted escalations. Going further, the BMC, under you know the 25-year um, governance of the Shiv Sena, we came out of a deficit of almost 600 crores in 1997 yeah. to a surplus of 92,000 crores yeah. by uh, 2022. Now this fixed deposit, or what you know the BJP claims, pesa, 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 they were eyeing this because they want to loot Mumbai and want to make us stand with a begging bowl in front of Delhi. Each of this, uh, you know, uh, penny 
from the 92,000 crores has been accounted for, shown in every budget and has been linked to a particular project. Mm -hmm. Today, what has happened with this Minde government is we have committed expenditure, liabilities of more than 2.5 lakh crores. When we form the government, we're going to have a free and fair inquiry on every bit of this. Mm -hmm. And mark my words, we will not spare a single official mm -hmm. or a minister who is responsible for this loot and corruption, be it the former municipal commissioner, Mr. Chahel, or anybody. The reason being, this was only done to loot Mumbai. Mm -hmm. The road scan that I've exposed, yeah. not a single road is complete from Jan 2022 to now, mm -hmm. from uh, Jan 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, not a single project that has started off in Jan 2023 has been completed or even made half or 30% by today. Every road in Mumbai is dug up. What are we talking about? They are talking about beautification of Mumbai. Yes, with those uh, very tacky lights put up everywhere and terrible peacocks put up everywhere. I mean, at least have some aesthetic sense. You know, we were doing projects like safe schools, mm -hmm. uh, where 50 meters radius of a school has to be safe for every child to step off the bus and go into school and come out. Uh, dental checkups, mental counseling, ophthalmology, diabetes, type 1 management, all of this. This has been defunded. Astronomy labs, uh, nature clubs in schools, Electric buses, electric, all of, all of these things, you know, it's been defunded. For what? Because we started it. How is this politics? So, uh, you know, the ruling gov uh, government is like putting ED, CBI uh, kind of pressure on people close to you as well, especially in the BMC related alleged scams. Yes. Uh, you know, soon uh, they are saying like the BJP leaders have been saying that soon we will come to Aditya Thakre as well. Uh, do you think that this is like a precedent going forward as well? Because, you know, the use of uh, central agencies against opposition. How do you It is basically, a, uh, you know, the EDIT CBI is a part of the ND alliance today. They've not wanted coexistence with political partners. Most of the political partners were pushed away uh, or cheated on by the BJP. Betrayed badly by the BJP and today the only partners that remain are ED, IT, CBI. Uh, look at Maharashtra's trend. Mr. Minde had to run away to Gujarat because he was threatened with jail. The join or jail policy has worked for some. Um, some people in the recent 6-8 months have joined uh, the BJP, joined hands with the BJP because they were named in a scam or a white paper and they got scared. So they ran away. Uh, look at Suraj Chavan's arrest. Mm. Suraj Chavan and Amol Kirtikar are being threatened. Suraj has been uh, behind bars for yeah. a month and a half. Nothing to prove. The ED is just going on with the political case. The funnier part is the owner of that company in this whole alleged scam, whatever the BJP claims, yeah. is a leader of the Minde gang. Mm. This is absolute dual talk. And let me tell you this. There will be a change this time in the country because otherwise the EDIT, CBI will start harassing people, common citizens. There will be a change and these agencies will have to answer us and answer the people in open court. So what's your reading about, uh, you know, Maharashtra, if you say? MVA, what is your reading? Maximum seats, but not just Maharashtra, across India. Uh, I think I heard this line from someone the other day. For the BJP, it's South says half, North may half. Oh, you think, you believe that as well? Absolutely, because what have they achieved for the people? Mm -hmm. After 10 years, if you've come down to campaign on issues of Hindu-Muslim, if you come down to campaign on Matan Mas Machi, uh, and random things as this, and you don't talk about the great success of the most mighty noble uh, demonetization, and GST, and the 100 smart cities that we've not only created in India, but on the moon also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, the doubling of the farmer's income, and for every person to get a home, uh, under Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana by 2022. Mm. Where are we campaigning? Uh, what about the 15 lakh rupees? My last question to you, uh, Aditya, you have been, uh, your political career spans like over a decade, but you've been in, you are Sena, but actively started... Uh, I don't feel that old. <laughs> I'm not trying to <laughs> no, say no. that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you actively started taking interest and lead, especially uh, in and around like 2017 BMC elections. So. It's been what now? Uh, seven, eight years. So, How is, what are you? What is no, your technically learning? around 2011, 2012, I started sort of, ad, you know, advising or pushing things at a policy level. For example, um, be it you know playgrounds or sports, yeah, okay. BMC schools, technology in BMC schools, electric vehicles in you know BMC electric buses, and of course 2017 onwards more actively. So yeah, more actively with and road visits light, and all. Yeah. yeah. So, so you know, I, uh, I think. Of course, Mumbai cars do trust us and that's been seen, which is why the BJP is not ready to hold polls. 
even pune if you look at what's happening with the vital tikri or with mula motor rivers or if you see with nashik or kolhapur um you know i've tried to voice the citizens there locally and of course with every district the agrarian crisis and everything so i think i'll keep doing my job that's that's my job to voice the people as a leader what have you learned and what is more to be done i think what is important is to of course uh, keep taking fe- feedback hmm. honest feedback which is unlike the bjp uh, don't betray allies don't step back on your word you know whatever promises you make make only those promises that you can deliver on and fulfill those promises well thank you so much for talking to us that was aditya thakre who believes that uh, india alliance uh, will do well in the upcoming election and uh, it's their time and they will form the government in the next lok sabha after the lok sabha elections are done this is me purva chitnis signing off